social status. Another dimension across which a bilingualism can be mired is the social status. Now, you might have noticed that I keep on switching from bilingualism to concepts of bilinguality and from bilinguality to bilingualism. I would justify this by saying that if you would remember, we talked about this whole concept that although when we are researching biling bilingualism or bilinguality, we need to know the distinction when a term is being used for individuals or when a term is being used for society at large so that you can narrow down the focus of your research. But having said that, the individual and the society are interlinked with each other. They exist in a dialectical relationship with each other. So the individual's choice of language is affected by the hierarchy of languages in a society. And the society is affected by the individual use of the language. So they are both related. And nowhere else is it more obvious than when we talk about the social status. Now, when there is a situation in which some languages or a language is somehow given a higher status, then the other languages, then we can have either additive bilingualism or we can have subtractive bilingualism. More often than not, when the hierarchy of a language or um, languages is very, very clear to everybody, then we move on to subtractive bilingualism. Now, when we talk about um, uh, subtractive and additive bilingualism, and we'll discuss what we mean by them, we also need to remind ourselves how can we know what is the status of a language within a sociocultural context is. So for the individuals living when, within that society, that might be very, very clear. However, when we as researchers move into a context, we can easily ascertain the status of a language by virtue of the domains they are being used in. What are the different functions assigned to different languages? Are, which languages are used as official languages? Which languages are used as medium of instructions? Which are the languages, for instance, which are prohibited in schools, in which you tell the students you'll be punished if you speak those languages? So a hierarchy is set. So it's a hidden curriculum of a school. It's the unsaid policies which somehow set the status of a language. So this reminds us over here that Pakistan also does not have a, any written language policy. But anyone belonging from Pakistan can tell that the English language definitely has this hierarchy, is, is on the top of other languages and somehow enjoys a higher status followed by Urdu and then come the regional languages. Now, in a system where this hierarchy is very clear, then you have this um, uh, subtractive bilingualism, which we will come back to in a moment. But when you have different languages, like you have in Switzerland, you have like four languages, and you give equal status to those languages, then uh, there is in that population what we call additive bilingualism. So people know more than one languages and they are enriched co cognitively. So in cognitive terms, when equal status is given to different languages, the, the individuals benefit cognitively and they have a flexibility of thinking which monolinguals don't have. However, 
when you have a um, situation like you have a situation for instance in india and in pakistan and several other post colonial countries in which one language or two languages are given a higher status their acquisition is somehow uh, difficult to access then you have subtractive bilingualism that is you try to learn a language at the expense of uh, the other languages so you would come across now several children who would say well we are very good in english language but we don't know how to write urdu or even professors from university will say it with some pride that we know english language but we don't know we have forgotten the urdu that is called subtractive bilingualism and cognitively it is said to uh, be a uh, crippling for the children for the individuals they say their cognitive development is delayed uh, if you compare it to uh, compare his um, uh, cognitive development to a monolingual peer and at times these differences might not be easy to catch up so having subtractive bilingualism is not a thing that we should aim at at all so in any case this distinction leads uh, is relates to conceptual linguistic consequences in a given socio cultural context of bilingualism